Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, I want to take a minute to introduce our latest service called Crowd Insight by Gadgetflow. It's an awesome tool we made to help you get honest feedback for your upcoming crowdfunding project. Some of the big results we've seen include increased conversion rate, finding out why your project isn't performing well, and getting feedback you need from potential backers. So please head over to gadgetflow.com slash crowd insight to check it out today. You can also find a link in this week's show notes. Now let's get into the episode. Hello, world. This is the Gadget Flow Podcast, a show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to talk to Nate Lowry, and Nate is one of those guys who you meet who's just awesome at everything they put their hand to. Nate is a former NFL player turned entrepreneur, and he has been incredibly successful um, throughout his whole career doing multiple things. And so he had a really big Kickstarter campaign, and he even recently appeared on Shark Tank. Uh, Uh, This episode is jam-packed full of awesome stuff. So without further ado, here is my interview with Nate Lowry. All right, I am here with Nate Lowry of Brazen. Nate, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great, Alex. Pumped to be here. Yes, we are very pumped to have you. So for people who are listening who may not know who you are or what you do, can you just give a brief overview into, you know, what you're currently up to? Yeah, yeah. So I have invented, uh, launched via crowdfunding campaign, uh, and then have, have grown this, uh, this business ever since. It, it's a collapsible foam roller is our launch product. Um, so in my, in my former life, I was a professional football player, uh, really took, you know, um, mobility, uh, recovery products. Um, they, were, they were an everyday part of my routine. Um, and wanted to find ways to make them more convenient to use essentially uh, so that people could take care of their bodies no matter where they were at. Uh, one of the, the kind of initial ideas I had um, through, you know, just using foam rollers all the time as a, as a football player uh, was to make a, a foam roller that could collapse flat so I could stick it in my backpack, my carry on and never have to travel without it so that my mobility routine, my mobility practice wouldn't suffer when I was on the road. Um, so that's our launch product and uh, working on a bunch of new stuff now uh, that we're excited to be coming out with in you know the next over the next year or so. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. So essentially it's a we call it a performance lifestyle brand uh, where we're offering tools to people to help them accomplish their goals uh, no matter where they're at at home or on the go. That is awesome, man. And your product is super, super cool. Um, and it's so clever. Like I think uh, a foam roller is just so important, especially if you live an active lifestyle and they've, they're just, they've exploded. You know, I don't know anyone who's active who isn't using one, but to bring them, to bring them anywhere with you is a total pain in the butt. So you guys totally, (laughs) you totally solve that with this, this, uh, product. And I just think it looks, looks super, super cool. So I have a bunch of questions about that. I have questions about your, you know, football days and how they correlate with your business. But before we get into all of that, like, I'm just curious how just, I want to know how you got here today. Cause I know you were an NFL player and now you're running a successful, pretty big business. You know, just tell us your story. Like what's the story of how you got to where you are? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, whenever I get asked this question, I always like to say that I I don't feel like I was a born entrepreneur. Um, so it wasn't like, I don't know. I I mean, maybe some things here and there in in middle school, you know, selling, selling candy, um, you know, to other kids in class, but it wasn't like I was always like gung ho about setting up my own lemonade stand. Um, I, I growing up, I dreamed of playing football, everything I, I put into, um, you know, all the work that I put into was, was kind of towards that goal. And I, I got great, great grades in school. So I ended up going to Yale. Um, and, you know, at the end of my days there, I, I had the ability to play football uh, and, and live out this kind of boyhood dream. Um, and it was kind of through this process of playing in the NFL that I became an entrepreneur, I think. Um, because as, as an NFL player, uh, you're really kind of, your own boss. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you are an employee of an organization, but what you put on the field comes down to the effort that you put in 
kind of the strategy and the moves that you make preparing in the off season uh, to go into the season and uh, guys get moved around all the time. And, you know, I was always, I was always a bubble guy. Uh, I like to refer to myself as a grinder. So I, I put in the work, uh, showed up every day, made sure the coaches knew that I was, I was there to, to be a good team, team member, to work hard uh, and to make the team better. And that kind of work ethic and, and really relying on, what I put in uh, was what I would see on the on the output of making the team, being on the roster, playing in the games, and you know, and being a successful football player. Uh, kind of you know ingrained in me this kind of entrepreneurial mindset, and yeah, I kind of took that to heart. And then you know, kind of as I retired, uh, we had a family business that that needed um, really needed me to kind of take it over. Uh, it was going through somewhat of a rough patch, and uh, at the time, I could miss a few paychecks and, and kind of help out, and um, and I took that on, and this is very much kind of like trial by fire, but uh, it was a consumer product business. Uh, it had, you know, an e-commerce component that we really worked hard to grow. Uh, it had a wholesale component, and I learned a lot really quickly uh, and had to learn a lot really quickly to kind of turn that business around. And... Uh, but uh, kind of in the back of my, my mind, uh, you know, I had these ideas of, of ways to help athletes uh, and, and ways to create products for things that I wanted when I was an athlete. And so when I kind of righted the, the ship of the other business and uh, got it to a place where it was fairly automated and didn't need a lot of time, I started developing the products that I was more passionate about. And, uh, and again, which is, you know, giving tools to people to, to help them on their journey. And, and so I uh, kind of dug into it and have always been kind of creative and able to, to make things with my hands. So I built some prototypes of the, the foam roller uh, in, in a garage. And then um, from there, it was just kind of, you know, tweaking it once a month, twice a month, whenever I had a, a little bit of free time. Uh, and then, you know, back in about 2015, I really – dug into it and, and you know it was kind of like I'd worked on it for a few years I had toyed around with the idea I'd put a, a provisional patent in place but it was time to just go out and see uh what the world thought of the idea and uh so developed it to the point where we thought we were we were ready to do a kickstarter launch uh launched on kickstarter had a really good response from there uh more so towards the second half uh learned a lot through that process and then, um, yeah, and then from there, you know, the, the traditional story of any, I think, first-time Kickstarter uh, uh, campaignee, which was, okay, this works. Now we have to figure out how to make it. We thought we knew how to make it really well to begin with. And then ran into a lot of roadblock, roadblocks actually going into production. And so it took us about a year uh, to get that done. And at the end of 2016 and the beginning of 2017, we shipped out all of our crowdfunding orders and then all the pre-orders we took on our website. And then uh, about five or six months later, I'm giving you the full rundown here. <laughs> love it. I love it, man. So stop, stop me at any time if, uh, if you want to uh, jump into something. Yeah, but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, um, about six months after that, uh, we were invited to be on Shark Tank. And, uh, you know, we're up in front of the sharks pitching the idea. And then in October of last year, at the end of October, that aired. Um, and then we have basically been, we were basically on back order. Um, really most of the life of my company, uh, the product has been on back order. Uh, but uh, about a month ago, we finally got caught up with all the pre-orders and all the back orders that we took um, during that time frame. And are now, yeah, we're now looking to kind of turn back up the, the marketing and and go out and, and let people know what we're about because we were, we were in a holding pattern there for a while. And uh, yeah, so we're excited to be moving forward and love the product. The feedback is amazing for it. Uh, people are stoked to have, you know, a product that they can easily slip in their bag. They don't have to think twice about whether they can take this, this modality that they're so used to using at home at the gym. Uh, now they can take it anywhere. They can use it in the office, wherever they want. Um, and so that's been exciting. That's, that's the biggest reward is like people coming back and saying, Hey, this is helping me a ton. This is helping my back. You know, we have, uh, we have people that fly in the military, uh, that are, are doing long sorties and, uh, out, uh, you know, flying for 
hours on end and, and uh, they come back and their body's pretty jacked up and mm. they reach back out and say, Hey, this, this has been a miracle for me. So that's, that's the really exciting part. Man, that is so cool. And it's amazing to see like how, how far you guys have come in such a short period of time. So you gave us the, the big overview and I just want to kind of dig into a few of those little points to get sure. some more, some more detail out. So your Kickstarter was really successful. Um, and I just want to know, I mean, and you even touched on it a little bit that the second half of it became more successful, which is honestly pretty rare. Um, usually, yeah. I, I, it seems like campaigns have a really big launch in the beginning and then things kind of fizzle out and there's a little bump again at the end. I'm curious, can you even just briefly describe what that story, how it wasn't very good in the yeah. beginning and then it jumped in the <laughs> second half? What happened? Yeah, I mean, we put a lot of effort into the the start and, and the launch, and I, I, our first couple of days were strong. Um, and then, you know, based off of the work we put into it, so we did a lot of effort to reach out to different magazines or blogs and and try to generate a lot of PR around the launch um, because the product is unique. We were really successful in that, and so we were able to do a lot of kind of organic traffic at the beginning. Um, and, and that gave us a, a strong start and then we started to slow down. Um, and we, we were, you know, we were relying on, on driving traffic through Facebook, but we were doing it ourselves. And, you know, I'm, I have to kind of like roll up my sleeves bootstrap mentality where, you know, yeah, I can figure this out and do it myself. And I, you know, you know, as well as I do that, uh, digital marketing and and um positioning a, a crowdfunding campaign um there is a science in and art to it and the people that are doing it all the time and our experts are are much more suited to to really drive traffic so we um we were doing it ourselves and we were going to hit our goal um but you know i had much higher expectations and and so towards the second half we we actually the last 12 days of the campaign uh, we started working with Funded Today, uh, which which just does that. They they drive um, traffic to to crowdfunding campaigns, and you know as soon as we brought them on board, uh, they they just uh, they 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 kicked its butt for us basically. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean I you know kind of through that I learned a few things. Like one, I don't know much about Facebook ads and I shouldn't pretend that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and two, that, you know, you need to partner with the right team and, and kind of how the whole process works. And, and, and you know, I wish we had started with them because our, our, our campaign would have, um, would have really, really excelled. And, and I was pumped with the way it went, but I would have loved to see what we would have done if we could have started with them. So, um, you know, that kind of taught me a lot. And uh, it's kind of a lesson I've taken forward where, uh, you know, I can't be an expert in all things. And um, as we, we bring on team members, you know, you really want to uh, kind of find the the holes and, uh, and and kind of put together an organization where everyone assists everyone else and, and you know, and really round out the, the roles that, that need to be filled. So, yeah, that was a that was a good start for us, for sure. Absolutely, man. That's actually been a theme. The past few episodes, I, I've had multiple people saying that if they could give advice to people for their successful campaigns, they, they would say partner with someone to worry about getting the word out about your, your campaign. Because uh, honest, in all honesty, like most of us are like the creator of a product, not like these digital marketing experts. You know, the chances right. that, the chances that you're both are very unlikely. <laughs> you know, um, and so uh, that's that's really cool though, and I, I appreciate you you saying that because I, I I think that's definitely a theme that I'm starting to see in these really really successful campaigns. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that you know the days of putting together, you know, a short video with a, a handheld camera that basically talked about the, the product and put it on, on Kickstarter and Egogo and seeing what happens is over. You know, it's, it's yeah. become, it, it's, I, I still totally think that they're great platforms for launching a product because you can get a lot of exposure um, much cheaper than you would have to if you were kind of trying to do it yourself and just generate people, uh, generate traffic and flow to a website that nobody knows about. 
people are already going to Kickstarter, so they're going to organically find you. Uh, people know what it's about, so they're interested in what new things are coming out. So it's an amazing platform, but it has become, I think, a little more professionalized than it was at the at the beginning. And so, totally to compete in that world, um, you need to work with people that are experts. And um, so, I would encourage anybody that's that's thinking about it to to look out for. Um, you know, agencies or people that are doing this every day, um, look at their track record, look to see if they have campaigns similar to what you're trying to create and, uh, you know, and find the right partner to, to go and do it. And, and because at the end of the day, like if you're a true visionary and you, you have an idea that you want to launch, um, you don't want to second guess whether the product is going to work uh, based off of that element. You know, you want to know if it's going to work, if this is something that you're going to commit your life to. And so to give yourself the best shot, you really you need to work with uh, people that are going to put you on the right trajectory. So, um, yeah, I would totally encourage. And it is more expensive and you don't get the full margin. And, um, you know, maybe that makes things a little bit tight to begin with. But the upside uh, can be huge. And if you, you, you know, you get some sort of viral uh, effect on it, then, you know, it all it all makes sense and it all works out. So yeah, totally. I would encourage people to do that. Definitely. So uh, n- my next question is more about the product. So I'm curious what what did, what about the campaign? What about your product? Do you think resonated with people? Like what what made it stand out to make it such a hit and something that people wanted? What do you think about what you did made it special? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just try to tell the story. Um, so I kind of you know, touched on it. Um, but the story of like why I came to, uh, want to create a collapsible foam roller and why I thought it was helpful. Uh, and I think the, the why is always the place to start with. Right. So, uh, you know, for me, I had a bad back injury. I was, I was playing with the saints and had this back injury that I tried to play the season through, uh, and it just continued to get worse and worse. Uh, but at the same time, I was playing more and more and just trying to basically deny, deny to myself that I had this thing that was uh, was going to need attended to and just try to push it off until the end of the season, to be frank. And uh, it was this year that um, the Saints were coming back from Hurricane Katrina and uh, back into New Orleans and people were rebuilding their lives. And we had just had this magical season where, you know, nobody expected anything out of the team and we ended up starting the season five or six and oh uh we went to the nfc championship game that year and that was really the turning point for that whole organization and and, and it was something that the the city could kind of uh build off of and and gather around as they were rebuilding their lives and it was such it's such a powerful thing and so like i didn't want that to end so i just kept pushing myself through it and it got to the point where i needed back surgery and then trying to figure out if i'd be able to continue to play football And in the recovery process, I started to use a foam roller and that and really figuring out how I could use a foam roller every day where, you know, I didn't have to pay uh, chiropractors and massage therapists and all these physical therapists every single day to make sure that my body can stay on the field. I could rely on a foam roller by doing a few things, uh, using it as a platform to do core stabilization uh, to do, you know, massage, to do, to kind of uh, adjust my vertebrae in a very simple way and, and rely on that to, to really take care of my body. And I uh, was traveling a ton in the off seasons and wouldn't take my foam roller with me. And I'd come back and I feel like I'd set myself back. And that's kind of really what inspired the idea is like, well, I want this to go with me. There's no reason it shouldn't be. If I could create a foam roller that is as good as anything else on the market and I could stick it in my backpack without thinking twice about it, um, I think that would be a pretty cool product. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where um, the, you know, I got the inspiration from. And uh, yeah, I totally lost track of the, the question there. But no, um, no, no. Yeah. The, I mean, I think you kind of <laughs> answered it a little bit in that it's something that you wanted. The, the question was just what do you think? about the product resonated with people when your campaign was yeah, up. And yeah, it sounds exactly. like, it, it, yeah, just something that they, they wanted just like you did as an athlete, you know, or someone who's active. I, I personally, I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not definitely not a pro athlete level, <laughs> like definitely not, but I'm an active person and I love foam rollers and I, they have definitely, I mean, the, the impact I've seen in them in my own body 
is just incredible. Mm-hmm. But I love I love your product because it's a if you travel a lot or if you're on the move, especially as a professional athlete or anyone who travels and wants to stay active and, and healthy and keep your body feeling right. I mean, it's just always been a barrier. You're like you, just like you said, you could set yourself back um, if you mm-hmm. if you know take a few days off because you're traveling and you don't want to bring a foam roller with you or whatever. Like it makes a lot of sense, and I love yeah. I love the product, man. So that makes that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And, and I think that's it. I mean, I think people are more active. They're more on the move. They're more aware of what mobility devices, uh, recovery products can do for them and um, they're using them at home. And so I think it's just a natural tra- transition and a, a natural evolution uh, to want to be able to, to take care of your body on the road, um, whether you're traveling for business or uh, for if you're a weekend warrior, you're going to a race, whatever it is, um, where you're out basically trying to, to be the best version of you, uh, you don't want to suffer just because you're on the road. Um, and so that's kind of where we, um, we're staking out our ground in the, in the recovery world is we want to we wanna give people the tools that allow them to, to recover on the road. Definitely, man. Okay, so Shark Tank. I want to know how this came about. Um, I just, uh, you said you were invited to be on, I'm, I'm curious how it came about and I don't, I, I've watched a lot of shark tank, but I don't know if I saw your guys episode. I would like to know the results that happened too from it, but maybe, maybe tell yeah. us a story about shark tank and your experience on the show. Yeah. So this is funny. I was, I was invited to come talk to an entrepreneurial group, um, in Santa Barbara where I live and it was at one of the, the local uh, universities here and they wanted to know all about shark tank and you know how it works and you know my my first point was you know don't expect to get on shark tank just because you have a good idea you know it's like incredibly difficult there's a long process it's a very small percentage of people that actually get uh, chosen to go pitch in front of the sharks and then you know not even everyone that that does uh, get chosen even errors. So um, it's a hard thing, but we, um, I was kind of lucky. I was kind of put in, to touch, uh, put in touch with one of the, the producers of the show um, and, and we connected and, you know, they kind of heard the story. They they kind of seen uh, the, actually the, the Kickstarter video and they really liked it. And, you know, I'd mentioned that they'd, they'd seen a ton of phone roller companies apply. Uh, they'd never selected one, but let's see what happens. Uh, so we got into the process actually pretty late. Um, it took us about from the time we fr- had the first conversation to the time we were pitching, I think was maybe a month and a half total, uh, which seems really fast. Um, and, and then you go and uh, you, you do the thing and uh, the sharks know nothing about you. Uh, they know nothing about the company. Uh, they don't, they don't know you at all. And you go up and it's, you know, everything you see there is real. Um, and then they, they uh, basically say goodbye, and we. So for our episode, it was pretty cool. Uh, so we went up, and you never know what's going to happen, right? It's kind of a, this nerve-wracking, frightening thing to go up there in front of some of the you know the best entrepreneurs and, and business minds out there, and and have them assess your business and your business model and your product and something that you put your your heart and soul into. And so that part is pretty scary. Uh, go out there and um, it was cool. We, we explained the products and there was a lot of uh, kind of back and forth as you typically see on Shark Tank. And then uh, pretty early on, uh, uh, Dave and John made an offer uh, and then that kind of got the ball rolling. At the end, we had two sets of sharks, uh, two teams. So it was Lori Grenier and Sarah Blakely that teamed up. And then Kevin O'Leary and Damon John had teamed up and they had the same offer uh, on the table and we had to decide who we went, we wanted to go with, uh, ended up choosing Lori, Lori and Sarah. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it's such, it's such a, a machine and such a cool platform to really want to, as a, as a viewer, I'm a long time viewer to learn about, you know, business and uh, entrepreneurism and like what you should be thinking about because they ask ask such pointed questions. Um, And so that, that, that was, uh, it was really cool to be part of it and see it. 
Um, and then also to be go through the process and then see it air and, and kind of see what that type of uh, exposure can do for, for our business. And like I said, I mean, we, uh, we were basically sold out. Um, we sold our last piece of in-stock inventory, I think maybe two or three hours before the show went live. Uh, so we were already kind of in a bad position, but, <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we were out of stock for, for months and months on end. And it didn't take us, you know, eight months to ship every order. But like, uh, as we continue to take back orders and, um, allow people to, to place orders on the website, our, our timeline for being caught up kept getting pushed out further and further. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a machine and it's a, it's a cool platform to really, um, talk about business, uh, see what businesses are out there and see what people are doing. Absolutely, man. Do you, what is, I'm just curious and obviously stop me if I'm asking too many questions, but what, is, yeah. how, how have the sharks that you chose, have they helped in the process? Has it been pretty hands on hands off? What is that relationship like once you select your sharks or are they? Yeah. Them? Yeah. So uh, I think it's a little bit different for everyone. So after the show ends, um, you actually go into a kind of a more, a, a deeper due diligence phase um, where both sides are trying to see if the deal is right. Um, and, and make sure that everything that was said on the show is legit. Um, and in the end, we, uh, yeah, we, we still work with Lori. Um, and I was actually on uh, QVC with Lori for the original business. I mentioned earlier that when I got out of, out of uh, football, I took over a family business. Uh, that business is a storm door closer. Uh, so it's door hardware. Uh, it was a product invented by my father-in-law, who's uh, a brilliant aerospace engineer that had a good idea for uh, a door hardware product um, that we that we sold. Um, and I actually was on QVC with, with Lori a couple months back with that product. So yeah, I mean, they've been, they've been great to work with. Uh, we'll continue to, um, work with them and and sell products through them and, um, and with them. So yeah, it's been, it's been cool. Uh, and, and, you know, having not, we were kind of on the cusp of going out and, and raising funds, uh, doing a capital round, before uh, we knew about Shark Tank and we knew we were going to get into that. We kind of put that all on hold in anticipation of of Shark Tank. And then um, I'd never been through it. So uh, kind of going through it and and seeing uh, the level of due diligence and and everything that goes into it um, was was pretty interesting. So it's been been a cool learning experience. And and both of those women are, are great and great to work with. Very cool. I love that. That's, uh, you know, when you watch shows, you never know what's real, what's not, what, what the relationship after the cameras are turned off actually looks like. So it's cool to know that it has been good for both sides. You know, that's, that's, that's exciting to know that about you guys. So I'm kind of going to jump to a different point now. And I, I'm just curious, and you kind of touched on it in the very beginning, but I wonder if you had anything specific that you would have to say on this is, is that, did, did you ever learn anything from being in the NFL, like a specific thing that has made you a better entrepreneur today. You had mentioned earlier about being a good teammate um, yeah. and things of that nature, but is there anything specific that you would say being in the NFL has done to make you better at what you do today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've, I've always been kind of a self-motivated, uh, hardworking person uh, from, from a very young age. Um, being in the NFL, which is, as you know, uh, extremely competitive. Uh, your job is basically uh, completely, uh, totally on the line. So if, if you're uh, one of the guys that is a backup, um, you can be replaced pretty much at any time. And and so it takes a lot of uh, strength, I guess. And and really, what it is 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 I think the NFL honed my grit. Right. So uh, you're there's always um, this thing, you know, the, the ability or the, the potential of, of losing your position or um, being hurt or being knocked out of the game for whatever reason uh, that, that is kind of looming over your head. Um, and you have to be gritty to kind of like stick through that, to push through those unknowns. And I think that's really where, you know, the NFL was able to help me hone that. 
uh, and and really uh, clarify in my mind where I could push myself and and what I needed to do to get the job done. And uh, taking that into entrepreneurism, I think, is a, an invaluable lesson because there's not all up days. Uh, there's plenty of down days, uh, and if if you just focus on those, then then you know you're gonna you're gonna bow out before you really given something an opportunity. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that was kind of one of the big lessons. Is like um, I, I know where I can push myself and 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 what I can take uh, to get the job done. Uh, and, and so I think that's that's a big part of it. Yeah. What advice would you say you have for young entrepreneurs or people who are wanting to get started in either, how about this? How about what advice would you have for young entrepreneurs who are looking to get started in crowdfunding, not just business, but business with crowdfunding? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we kind of talked about it earlier. Um, one, I think uh, you want to, you want to have the product fairly well developed. Uh, you want to have it, uh, a, a good working prototype, at least if not, a pre-production prototype um, when you go on and, and you want to have tested it on your, your family, tested it on your friends, ask people about it, ask, it, ask them if they wanted it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so do some of this kind of market testing, uh, even if it's very general, uh, get a sense uh, if, if people get excited about the idea. Um, and if people in your immediate you know, network, don't get excited. That doesn't mean the product may not work, but you just haven't, you know, you haven't found the right niche, whatever. But um, get it to a stage where you're pretty proud of it. Uh, make sure you're meticulous with uh, the design elements and, and you're going to deliver a great product. And then um, work with somebody that knows what they're doing uh, in terms of helping you market your campaign, uh, getting in front of the right set of eyes and uh, the right set of uh, people that, are likely to uh, back a crowdfunding campaign. Um, and that's kind of the, the secret sauce because uh, there is a little bit of a, I think a, a niche basically within the crowd and within the consumer uh, world of people that will back and want to back crowdfunding campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's, it's a little bit different buyer maybe uh, than, than a traditional, uh, you know, B to C setup. So, yeah, find those people that can help you get that job done um, and, and basically just go for it. Do whatever you can to test your idea and, uh, and put it out there. Awesome. So what, what is next for you guys? What is the next thing that you're really excited about? What, what is, what's coming up? What's coming down the pipe for you guys? Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we, we're finally back in stock. That was a, a long, tough road uh, that helped us really uh, improve our manufacturing process, hone our manufacturing line uh, and the supply chain and all that, all that uh, important fun stuff that goes behind delivering a product. Um, we've, we've gotten through a lot of that um, over the last several months. Uh, and now we're excited to finally be getting our product on Amazon uh, specifically for our type of product. Uh, it's, such a, it's such a powerful channel um, that we, have been holding off on just to make sure that um, everything is right um, and and that we had the capacity to go and uh, you know take the volume uh, of our of our orders and our fulfillment to the next level. So yeah, we're really excited to be getting on Amazon uh, in the near future. Um, hopefully by the end of August, we'll be up and running and um, selling uh, one of our foam rollers there. And then yeah, just continuing to to grow and, and to work on new products. Man, that's a really cool problem to have. <laughs> you have to be concerned whether or not you'll have enough of these to keep selling them because they're just flying off the shelf. <laughs> that's really cool. That's a very good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. Thank. Well, thank you. Yeah. Congratulations on such an awesome, awesome product, awesome brand campaign, everything, man. I, I know the future is super bright for you guys. So where, where can people connect with you online? Where should they go check out what you guys are doing? Yeah, you can check us out. Uh, easiest place is our website. It's brazen, B-R-A-Z-Y-N-L-I-F-E dot com. Um, so, or you can just go to brazen.com, B-R-A-Z-Y-N. Uh, check us out. Uh, see what we're about. Uh, there's videos. Uh, we'll be generating more content, really helping people um, know how to use a foam roller, uh, not just what the product does, but uh, different ways they, they can use it and use some of the knowledge that I've gained through 
uh, through my background of, of trying to figure out the best way to take care of a body that's that's constantly getting beat up. Um, and we're, you know, we want to start digging into to really delivering more uh, value on that end. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, but uh, now it's time to, to put that out there and really help people uh, get the most out of the, the products that we're going to offer. So uh, check us out there. Uh, there's there's an easy web form. You can email us uh, at any time at the morph, T-H-E-M-O-R-P-H dot com, at, at brazen dot com. Um, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. Awesome. Nate, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It was so great to talk to you. And um, yeah, I'll include all that stuff in the show notes so people should go check out everything that Brazen's doing. And we just appreciate you, man. Thanks for being on this week. So fun to be on, Alex. Thank you so much. That was my interview with Nate Lowry. So please make sure to go check out everything as Brazen is doing. Grab a foam roller and make sure to connect with them online. Thank you so much for being on the show this week, Nate. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out the site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please head over to iTunes and give us a big five-star review and rating on our show. Thank you so much for listening to the GadgetFlow podcast.